Hi everyone, um, I'm Amanda Rick and this is Katie Green. We are doing a quick video for you um, with some basic Zoom features of pinning, spotlighting, and then also ordering and moving around your windows. So let's start quickly by reviewing the speaker view and the gallery view. So up in the top right corner of your main Zoom screen, when you click on view, you can switch between speaker view which is going to put whoever's speaking as your main speaker or gallery view, which puts all your windows out there. Um, so you can see all of your students at once. Um, up to 49 students is where Zoom is at right now. And then the other feature I want to show you right away is just when you're looking at each individual participant's window, you're going to click in that top right corner to get to three dots. And there are multiple options that are available in here, especially when you're the host. And we're gonna talk about some of these options today. So you'll need to make sure you understand where the three dots are. All right, Katie, take it away. So let's start with talking about pinning. We're going to cover both pinning and spotlighting and they're similar, but they're also very different from one another. Pinning is something that only impacts your computer and it does not impact anyone else's. So this will not impact anything that your students see, only what you see on your screen. This is available to both you and your students. So just like you can pin something, your students also have that ability. When you pin something, you're going to go to the top right part of the screen and you are going to click on those three dots and you're going to select pin video. And Amanda's doing this on her screen. So when she does this, you're going to see that that video that she's chosen has become the largest in her screen. Um, we see this probably the most beneficial when you're working in groups and you maybe want to focus on one specific student and you want to see just what they are up to or kind of monitor their work. Um, the other way that this is really impactful that we've been using it at Island Lake is when you are tilting their screen. So this is something that we have had a lot of staff members do when they're working with kiddos in their reading or they're doing math homework. We have them tilt their screen just like Amanda is right now. Can you go a little bit farther for us? Yep, I'm going to switch to myself pinning. I was pinning you. Thank you. So we can, um, as st uh, staff members, we can be working maybe in a small group and we might have our students writing or practicing math questions and we will have them tilt their screen. And as a teacher, I might wanna watch one specific student because when they do tilt their screen, it's not very big. I do need to see it a little bit larger on my screen. And so what I would do is I would pin that video. The best part about pinning is that I can do that. The rest of the students still think that I'm watching all of them, but right now I'm only focused on that one student. So, yeah, when so you, students do not know that you're pinning. And when you, when you want to unpin that and you don't want that one anymore, say you wanted to go to someone else, you would just click on those three dots and click unpin. Um, and also, depending on if you're the host or not, you may just click remove pin in the top left corner like you can see here. So on this screen, I would click remove pin. All right. The next feature we're going to talk about is spotlighting. Um, this is like pinning where you are kind of zooming in and focusing on a certain participant or participants. However, unlike pinning where it affects only your computer screen, spotlighting pushes out um, that, that choice that, that you've made of who to kind of focus on, pushes it out to all students or everybody in the meeting. So for example, if I decide to click on the three dots and click spotlight for everyone on my own window, it's going to take my window and make it large. It is doing that on Katie's screen right now as well. And on participant one screen and participant two screen and participant three screen and so on. Another feature that we wanna mention is the multi-spotlighting. <laughs> Never mind, not mentioning, not mentioning that right now. Uh, okay, so one thing spotlighting is really useful for is when you want um, either your students to be focusing on you as the teacher. I'm going to remove my spotlight here. Oh, clicking on the wrong person. Um, you want your students to be focusing on you as the per as the speaker, or if you have a student who's sharing and you want all of the other students in the class to be focusing on that one particular student, you can force it out to all students' computers to have the one student spotlighted for everybody so that everyone can focus on that particular student. I will ask Amanda, on my computer, when you took the spotlight off, 
-hmm. did have my screen in gallery view and now it is back to speaker view. And so as a student, you might have to explain to them that if they want to return to seeing everyone that they would go back up to the view and select that gallery view again. Good point. So I'm going to do that right now. I go back to gallery view. You can see no one right now is spotlighted. But again, if I wanted to make Katie spotlighted, it's going to change on my screen and now it just changed on her screen as well. One thing we also want to point out is that you cannot spotlight someone with their camera off. So if I try to go to participant one, two, or three and go to the three dots, I'm not going to see that spotlight option until they turn their camera on. So let me just turn this camera on here. So I turned on the camera for participant one, and now when I click on the three dots, you can see the spotlight for every one option is there. All right. If you are working on just a Chromebook, uh, this this is kind of the end of the video for you. If you are someone that's working on a district laptop or your own laptop, we have some more information to share with you. And we're gonna start by kind of returning to the pinning. Um, so going back to the pinning, we talked about that you can pin one person on your screen. As, a, as someone that's working on a laptop, so this only impacts you and not your students because they are on Chromebooks, you can do something called multi-pin. And it's exactly what it sounds like. You can pin multiple people, up to nine people at once. And so Amanda can go ahead and show you how to do that on her screen. Okay, so I just pinned myself. Now when I go to another participant, oh, Katie, I accidentally muted you there. <laughs> She's going to unmute herself. Um, I'm going to click on her three dots here, and I'm going to click Add Pin. And when I do that, it now puts both mine and Katie's side by side. Again, this is only on my computer screen. So this did not affect Katie's screen. She doesn't necessarily see. She's likely still in gallery view. Correct? Correct. Okay. And then you can also do a third pin. And you can pin people whose cameras are off. So just a heads up on that. It's a little bit different from spotlighting in that way. Now I have three windows going across my screen right now to focus on three people in the meeting. All right, I'm gonna remove pin, same way. Going to the three dots and removing each person. I'm gonna remove myself up here on this option. And then I'm actually going to switch back to gallery view so we can talk about our next week. One thing we want to mention is that there is an option you'll notice when spotlighting. I'm spotlighting myself right now. And if I click on Katie's screen up here, you'll notice that there's an add spotlight option. That's because multi spotlight is a new feature with Zoom. However, we want you to know that even if you go and you add a spotlight where I now have two spotlights on my screen, it is not being pushed out to students on Chromebooks. It doesn't affect the Chromebook. So if you spotlight one person, it will affect them on their Chromebook. If you try to spotlight a second person, it only works for you and it's not working for them yet. Um, Chromebooks just have not updated with Zoom enough. So we wanted to make sure we mentioned that. And then the hopefully next, sorry, go ahead. Hopefully soon. Yes, hopefully soon. Um, okay, so I'm going to remove my spotlight here, and the last thing I want to talk about is that when I share my screen, it's going to automatically spotlight me. So if I click share screen, my students are looking at my entire screen right now, but Katie, who do you see on the screen? I see you right now. Okay, so Katie is only seeing me. However, if I wanted my students to see someone else, I could do that single spotlight of someone else. So if, for example, I had um, some student work up here, let's say Katie had completed an assignment and I brought up the, her work. So I am sharing my screen and showing her work to the whole class, which then will take up most of their screen, but I can go and spotlight Katie. And what it does is now on everybody's screen, they see Katie's work and then also just Katie, so that she can go ahead and talk about her work. So the spotlighting is a nice feature that also works when you're sharing your screen. So even though you as the host, or I as the host right now, can see multiple windows in my video panel, because I have Katie spotlighted, um, the students are only seeing her along with my screen. Correct. All right, Katie, anything you wanna add? 
not to the spotlighting. No, I think that's that's good. We'll keep our eye out and let you guys know if it does change for the multi spotlight for sure. Okay. So then the last thing we wanted to talk about today is changing order of participant windows, another feature that works only on laptops. Katie, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. I will walk through if I miss something as you're kind of doing this on your computer. Okay. So, um, basically, as your kiddos enter, they're put in an order. If you have the ability to on your computer on laptop, and this will only affect the order on which you see. And so you have the ability to move people around to where you want them. Maybe you want them in alphabetical order. Maybe you want them in specific groups. Let's say that you've put them into groups. So you kind of want all of their videos bunched together in one area. You would be able to do that simply by clicking on them and dragging them. Now, what we did want to talk about was that you can put them in a certain order, but what does happen, just remember that if you are to raise your hand, um, so a lot of kids will raise their Zoom hand, you're going to notice that, so did you put me in the middle, Amanda? I've got you at the bottom right now. Okay, great. So if I raise my hand, you're going to notice that my box then shoots all the way to the top, um, just to let her know that, let the teacher know that I've raised my hand. As soon as I lower that, it's going to put me exactly back to the spot that she had me. The biggest thing about this is to remember that it is in that order just for you and the students do not have that ability to do it on their computer or um, can they can they also cannot see the same order that you are seeing. True. All right, I think that's everything that we want to cover in this video. We're hoping that um, Chrome will come out with kind of the newest version of Zoom that's available on laptops right now. So that a lot of other features that we'd love to share with you, um, you'll be able to use. But we can't do that until the Chromebooks are ready to go or Chrome updates. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. We are happy to help. Thank you.